Hello, I'm Clive Harris. I'm an IMA Lead Infrastructure Specialist at the World Bank. We've already heard about why promoting green, resilient and inclusive development is important. Infrastructure will have a critical role in achieving this by generating growth, reducing CO2 emissions and strengthening resilience. But the right infrastructure investments have to be made and the right policy and institutional frameworks have to be put in place to make this happen. The quality infrastructure investment principles provide a good framing for how to achieve this goal. The first principle is maximizing the positive impact of infrastructure to achieve sustainable growth and development. The impact of infrastructure on growth and em employment is mostly medium and long term as investments connect communities and markets. Some infrastructure projects, such as maintenance of smaller roads, are labor intensive, can be put in place quickly and can generate many jobs in the short term and they can even be part of a recovery package. Infrastructure investments must also promote sustainable development. This includes meeting international commitments, such as those related to climate change. The second principle is raising economic efficiency in view of life cycle cost. The operations and maintenance costs over the life of an infrastructure asset can be very significant. Often, these recurrent costs are not taken into account sufficiently well when governments plan infrastructure and when they make procurement decisions about how to source that infrastructure. Worse, many governments do not spend enough on maintenance, so assets deteriorate over time and the quality of services they provide worsen. Resources sometimes are allocated towards new projects rather than maintaining or rehabilitating, rehabilitating existing ones, which might actually be cheaper. Good maintenance generates substantial savings. Data suggests that good maintenance reduces the total life cycle cost of transport and water and sanitation infrastructure assets by more than 50%. Poorly maintained assets are less reliable and they're less resilient. The third principle is integrating environmental considerations in infrastructure investments. Most prominent among this is the extent to which infrastructure investments going forward can contribute to decarbonizing the economy and, and help meet national strategies and nationally determined contributions for greenhouse gas reduction. But of course, it goes well beyond this to include the impacts of infrastructure projects on ecosystems and biodiversity. And the role of ecosystems themselves in providing critical infrastructure services, for example, flood defense, should also be recognized. And the environmental impact of infrastructure investment should be made transparent to all stakeholders. Principle four is building resilience against natural disasters and other risks. The increasing number of extreme weather events and heightened magnitude of natural disasters is putting into sharper focus the need for governments to think proactively about the resilience of their infrastructure investments and about the resilience of the infrastructure networks in their countries as a whole. A long-term perspective is needed to factor in the impacts of climate change over time to ensure long-term adaptability. It's not just natural disasters and hazards, however. Infrastructure should also be resilient against human-made risks, including cyber attacks. And a comprehensive disaster risk management plan should be put in place that can influence the design of infrastructure, maintenance, and how essential services will be re-established in the event of disruption. Well-designed disaster risk finance and insurance mechanisms can also help incentivize resilient infrastructure through the financing of preventative measures. And there's also a direct link with principle two. The better maintained assets are and the better condition they're in, the more resilient they are. The fifth principle, is integrating social considerations in infrastructure investment. Unfortunately, sometimes infrastructure investments have negative impacts by displacing people, and they may not provide local populations with opportunities for employment. And when operational, the needs of some users may not have been adequately taken into account in the design of the project. Consultation and inclusive decision-making with affected communities throughout the project life cycle can address these potential problems. Particular consideration should be given to how infrastructure can facilitate women's economic empowerment through equal access to well-paying jobs and the opportunities created by infrastructure investment. Occupational safety and health measures need to be put in place, both at the infrastructure site and in the surrounding communities. The final principle is strengthening infrastructure governance. Infrastructure investments are expensive, long-lasting and bad decisions made now can lead to major costs later on. Clear rules, robust institutions, and good governance in the public sector will be important ingredients to ensure decisions on what and where to invest are made wisely. Good private sector practices, including responsible business conduct, can reinforce improvements for governments. 
And transparency, including placing information in the public domain, can reinforce good rules and policies. This includes transparency and openness in procurement and contracting. And of course, measures to combat corruption will be important. Finally, capacity building and access to good data will be vital to make sure the rules, policies and institutions deliver. Good data facilitates cost and benefit analyses, and it helps project management and evaluation. And good data and good capacities will be particularly important in understanding the fiscal cost of infrastructure investments over the lifetime of the operation of the asset, including understanding possible contingent liabilities. And understanding the fiscal costs of infrastructure will be absolutely critical going forward, given the fact that many governments have substantially increased their public debt due to the COVID-19 economic crisis. And we really need money that's spent on infrastructure to be spent as efficiently and as wisely as possible. In the next four weeks, you'll have a chance to understand more about these principles and the important considerations that are involved in putting them into practice. We flip the order of the principles a bit in the course. You'll hear first about climate and environment issues, then resilience and inclusivity. In weeks four and five, we address the building blocks of achieving all of this. Addressing climate, environment, resilience and inclusivity rely on sound management of infrastructure over the life of the assets, as well as good decisions on what to build based on life cycle considerations. On all of this hinges on good decision making. Sound infrastructure governance underpins all the other principles. This MOOC has been financed by the Quality Infrastructure Investment Partnership. The World Bank and the Government of Japan established this partnership with the objective of raising awareness and scaling up attention to the quality dimensions of infrastructure in developing countries. The partnership accomplishes this goal through financial support for project preparation and implementation, as well as knowledge dissemination and learning, such as this course. We're grateful to the Japanese government for their financial support to this partnership and this course. And I hope you enjoy the remaining four weeks of the course. We look forward to your active participation and engagement. Thank you.